Welcome back, guys. I'm KP. This is Gino J. The real estate gurus. And today we're just going to sit back and relax and answer some of you guys' comments and questions that you left up under these videos. We have a couple comments from a couple faithful viewers. And we just want to um, acknowledge these comments on air so you guys can get a, a actual response instead of a, a reply. So the first question I'm going to ask Gene is coming from Joshua Hill. He say, do you find it profitable to deal with any property already valued over 300,000 around Atlanta? Uh, yes, I mean, the, the beautiful thing about Atlanta, there's profits in every price point. I mean, we've done, you know, $1.5 million houses. You know, we've done $500,000, $700,000 houses. There's always profit in every price point. One of the things I would say is that when you're doing bigger houses that cost more money, um, don't over leverage yourself because sometimes when you, when you over leverage yourself, uh, and you have high interest loans, those loan payments are pretty large. And if you got, a, if you purchase a property for 300,000 and you have a renovation, that's going to be, you know, 150,000 and you're getting a loan for 400,000, you know, your, your payments could be 36 to $4,000 a month on that loan. You carry that loan for 10 months, that's $40,000. So it can eat up your profit. So you have to do it um, strategically. Uh, there are some lenders out there that will allow you to purchase the property and they'll hold off on your renovation. So you don't have to pay on the undrawn balance. So if you have a $150,000 renovation, you're only paying on the purchase price and you pay as you draw down. Uh, another thing is trying to do your your plans as much as you can before you close on the house. So yeah, you can make money in any price point, but just be smart about it. Make sure you have enough holding time to allow you to get through the project so that you don't eat all your money up in, in, in fees and, and mortgage payments if you, if you have uh, leverage on it. All right, and question number two, do you guys teach wholesale? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, we, we, we've talked about wholesaling. We really don't teach wholesaling. There are a lot of other great people that actually teach wholesaling. We used to do a lot of wholesaling. I was an agent. I did a lot of wholesaling. So I know wholesaling. One of the reasons I don't teach wholesaling is because, you know, I don't think it's the best entry point for people to get started. Like, in my opinion, the reason I was really good at wholesaling was because I was an agent first and I knew value. I always encourage people to go the agent route versus the wholesaling route because you just make more money in my opinion. So no, I, I don't teach wholesaling. I'm not knocking it. It's a great way to make a lot of money. But at the same time, I don't think it's the best entry point to get started in real estate. So I don't teach it. Gotcha. And that question was from Brandon Whitner. And question number three coming from Jamal Bellamy. Out of Tallahassee. <laughs> he had a great question. He asked, although the real estate market had shows so much shortage in the supply with the houses that's already here, um, do we see a focus turned towards the new builds? What do you what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean new builds I mean, has been a focus for, for, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I still see with all the population growth and everything that's going on, if you look at how many people are still moving to Atlanta, there's still gonna be an uptick in new construction. Gotcha. So yes, their new bills are, are gonna be, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, new bills and multi-family. Yep. yep. And we got question number four coming from Marcus White, also out of Tallahassee. He would like to know the process, once a property has been remodeled or built, the process to the next step to getting it sold. And it's multiple steps to that, but to dumb it all down, we like the stage. And I'll let Gene go into more about getting this property to show the way that we want it to show, that way it'll move as quickly as possible. Yeah, so like on a property like this, once it's ready, uh, once we feel like it's ready, obviously we stage it. Uh, there's always a lot of little punch outs because we got, you know, last minute stuff going in, you know, electricians, sometimes, you know, they, they nails go through wires, whatever. It's always little things that we got to 
touch up. So once all the touch up is done and we get the staging done, you know, we'll do professional pictures, we'll do professional videos, and then we'll put the market, the property on the market with the realtor. Uh, and I am a licensed realtor, my wife is a realtor, so my wife lists all our properties, but after she does the pictures, you know, she'll set up open houses, and then she do a lot of online advertising and marketing for the property. All those things are great, but at the end of the day, honestly, it boils down to, you know, the product, which is the house, you know, how well it looks, and also being a good value. Because when you put it on the MLS, it's gonna syndicate out to all these other sites and channels, and other agents bring buyers to the property. So, you know, there's a lot of things that she do to drum up traffic and get publicity for the property, but having it priced right and having a great product is really what's gonna sell the house. Great question, Mark. And coming in at number five, we have a great question for some new guys that are um, in real estate school right now that are worried about finding a good broker and a good fit. What do you give these guys? Um, one, you know, you can get on Redfin and Zillow and some of the local sites and see which uh, brokerage are dominating sales in your area. Then you can visit their website and do like a career night or call the recruiter and then meet with the recruiter. Uh, because depending on your situation and depending on where you're at and what, what brokers are in your area, you do want to meet with everybody and see what they offer. All brokers are not the same. Some brokers offer a lot of training, a lot of support, um, but you may pay higher real estate fees. You may have a, um, a certain cap that you hit per year. Keller Williams charges 15000 and they charge like a $3,000 um, um, franchise fee. So every time you sell a house, you pay towards that that cap for that year. Some brokers just charge a flat fee where every time you sell a house, you just pay a couple hundred bucks, but they don't offer a lot of the other stuff. So you wanna interview um, everybody that's in your area and see what fees they offer. But being new, don't get so hung up in what they charge. Pay more attention to what they can offer you in terms of teaching you on how to get started fast. Because like Keller Williams, they have a fast start training where it's like 12 weeks of continuous training on how to write contracts, how to list properties, how to market properties, how to, nav through, how, how to navigate through the MLS, how to do all these things. So you just wanna find somebody that, that has education that can teach you all these steps of real estate. All right, and the next question comes from DJ Light South 06. Can you guys recommend any good black general contractors in the Atlanta area that are experienced with working with investors? First off, great question. Second off, Gene and ourselves are probably those people, but we'll tell you how to find some good contracts. Well, one, um, like the way I find contractors is, you know, if I'm starting out and I'm looking for contractors, I'm probably going to get on um, maybe Angie's List and um, Home Advisor yeah. and try to get some people to come out. Um, I found people at Home Depot. And, and once you get contractors, I mean, you, you're going to have to go through some contractors before you find a good one sometimes. But just to kind of back up, I would honestly, I say stay away from the general contractors and try to find the subcontractor that's doing the work because you don't want to be giving nobody a bag up front to start your job. If you're looking to do something, you know, if you're new to this, one, you're not going to be doing new bills and additions out the gate. You're probably going to be doing mostly cosmetic. So really you need a good roofer. You need a good um, electrician, a good plumber, a good HVAC guy, and a good carpenter. Those are like really the five things that you need and a good painter. Sometimes your painter and your carpenter can be one of the same. But try to find those people. Start with Home Advisors and Angie's List. And um, once you get good subs that you can trust, get referrals. Because more than likely, a, a, a somebody that does paint knows somebody that does sheetrock and trim. You know, usually an, a plumber don't know an electrician or somebody that does HVAC and vice versa because these guys are working together on a lot of projects. So starting out... I wouldn't focus on contractors, but I would focus on the subcontractors that's doing the work. Then you hire the people, and then two, you're not going to pay them until the work's done to your liking, and then three, you're going to do home inspections um, on the work because one, you're not going to be getting on the roof, 
You're not going to be going to no crawl space. And really, you probably don't know what you're looking for in terms of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. So you hire an inspector to come inspect it to check for any, you know, any errors and make sure everything's done right before you pay them. So focus on subcontractors and stay away from, from contractors. That's my advice. All right, I'm going to take one more question, and this is coming from Brandon Whitner. Brandon asks, dude, how much would you charge to inspect the property? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, if 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 we if we bid on the job, we don't charge anything to give you a bid on the job. Right. Um, if I know you um, and you're a serious investor, you know, if you got on the contract, we'll come look at it. But if you're thinking about buying some stuff, we just don't have the time. Don't have the time. We just don't have the time. I mean, but if you if you got something on the contract and you know you sound like you you know, looking to try to purchase it. I don't mind coming out there, especially if, like if it's like an Atlanta and DeKalb, because it's probably already in the area I'm already in, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I mean, just coming out, looking at properties, you know. All right, and to piggyback off of what Gene said, we we won't come out unless it's on the contract or you already own it or someone else owns it. But if it's out of our way or maybe on a day that we're not in the area or working that day, we will charge a fee, but if we're working on the job, we'll incorporate that fee into the first draw or whatever. But that fee will have to be paid at that inspection or prior to that inspection. But yeah. we're going to charge you. Yeah, and the only reason we would charge is because we get a lot of people like, hey, I got a job I want to look at, and it's just, it's just wasting time. Right. So now we're just going to read a few of the inspirational comments that inspired Gene and myself to, to continue doing these videos and uh, from Siobhan Frazier. She said, this information was extremely helpful. God bless y'all. Thank you, Ms. Siobhan. Um, Twin Stro, he just said, thanks for the info. Scarlett Ella, Scarlett Ella. She got, she come in, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you, Ms. Scarlett. Theodore Benton, same thing, great stuff. So when you guys leave us these comments, we get inspired to make more videos, more informative, and just give you guys more content. We try to pump out at least three, four videos a week. And um, we're just really inspired by this, like Twin Stroke commented, it's the best home remodeling show on TV. He never lied. <laughs> he lied. But we thank you guys, man. Um, just please keep commenting on this video. Make sure you subscribe. Please like it, share it with your friends, your family, and we're gonna continue to keep doing what we do as long as you guys keep commenting and asking these good questions. Yeah, definitely, definitely keep asking questions. Uh, 13 years in the game, I done sold over 2,000 houses as an agent. I done flipped, I can't even count, hundreds and hundreds of houses. And we're not talking from the perspective of somebody from the outside looking in. Every house that we film, my name's on the title, that's shit that we bought, <laughs> for, you know, so real. I'm, telling you from purchasing it, using my own money, our experiences. So ask any questions that you can think of. Cause we've, we've, we've done everything from all different types of wholesale deals, double closings, triple closings, <laughs> all type of crazy assignments uh, from the construction, you know, develop land. I've built subdivision, about to build townhouses, looking at building a strip mall next week with somebody. Then we got project in, you know, commercial project in Florida. So we just have yeah. a wealth of knowledge. And I, I like I like sharing that knowledge with you guys and hopefully that you can take something from it and, and incorporate it in your business. So ask the questions and we'll, we will definitely answer to the best of our ability. Thank you guys. And always remember, I'm KP. And Gino J. The real estate gurus. Thank you guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe and stay tuned.